Hello everybody, my name is Taylor DeGrace and I have a question for you and that is, should you play Fearless Fantasy? Well, throughout this video, that's exactly what we're gonna find out. Fearless Fantasy was originally released on the 15th of May in 2014. It was developed by Enter Sky Studios, which is comprised by Andrew Kareckis and Daniel Borgman. I apologize if I butchered any names there. The Steam version was published by Tiny Build, which came out with games like No Time to Explain, Speedrunners, Lovely Planet, and most recently Road to Valhalla. I'm not just going to be talking about the Steam version in this game, I will also be uh, contributing a little bit of my insight onto the iPad version of this game as well, because I have played both. So without further ado, let's get started and load up into a file. So I'm just going to go into this file that I've already started with and we're going to find an encounter. So I think the best way to show off the game, uh, I'm not gonna go into upgrades or shop at this very second, we're going to go into a basic encounter. This game actually has a lot of dialogue and a lot of story to it, and I'll talk about my feelings about the story in a little bit, but for right now, it doesn't really matter at this very second. Let's just go into a normal game, and I'll show you a little bit of what this game has to offer. So we have one of three. All right, so this is what basic combat's gonna look like. At the very start of each level, an enemy will want to attack, but the battle system is a little bit different from a normal turn-based RPG. So when an enemy attacks me, I'm going to have to perform a gesture to defend myself. So I'm gonna do that again. So with that one, I got an epic, so I actually took reduced damage there. So uh, the Sky Mare is going to attack Alice. So I'm going to attack. Uh, also, to attack enemies in the first place, you're going to have to figure out what you want to do and then attack them. So I have some special moves, but I'm just going to use a basic move for now. Another really important thing to note is when you're about to attack an enemy, you should really look at their stats because they'll, they might have things like flying, dodges, non-epic melee attacks. That means if you uh, perform your gestures perfectly, you'll get an epic, but if you don't, you'll miss this person completely. So I'm actually going to use the, her as a ranged character to attack her perfectly. But I got actually a flawless on that. So if I was using a melee character like this guy right here, uh, he actually has uh, the ability to use uh, ranged attacks as well. If I use his melee attack on them and don't get an epic, I'll miss. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to just melee attack this character uh, just to show off what that's like. One of my major gripes is that I find that doing the melee QTEs uh, or the full gestures is not as good or easy to do on the computer. And I'm gonna show this off right here. To do to pull this off perfectly, I'm going to have to get the mouse, put it in the center of the arrow and move it along the arrow, which is actually very difficult. Uh, there's not a good margin for error here. Uh, I did successfully pull it off, but it's one of the things that's just easier on the iPad version. See, I successfully did it, but it was a little bit harder. I think that's one of the major differences between the two versions. I think it's the only major difference is the way that you interact with the game. A mouse and a finger is two totally different things. They're both good at totally different things, and this game was originally made to use your fingers on. So uh, this version, from a gameplay from a gameplay perspective, I find this version to be fine uh, when it comes to combat, but uh, it's just fine. I think it's a lot funner on the iPad. Something else that I think is really important to note about the game and that you might have noticed is the art style. Uh, the art the, the art design of the characters is actually really, really pretty. There are a lot of character designs that feel very unoriginal and I think that really carries through, but I do very much enjoy the stylization of these, uh, of these characters and I miss there and I feel really bad about missing there. You're gonna be going against a ton of enemies in this game. So having the variety of what the characters look like and have them have good animation and funny animations is really important. Something you guys might notice about the sound design of this game is that uh, there are some really annoying things that I don't think were quite thought of. I think that the music is pretty good, but it gets a little bit repetitive, uh, much like any battle music in any RPG. So the, I can't really fault it too much for that. But one thing that really kind of annoys me is the, uh, the characters. They will say, amazing or uh, I'm ready to go every single time and that really grates on me and there's no option in the menus to just turn the character voices off and if you want to see what I mean by that Let's do this. yeah see every single time he does that it's annoying in turn based RPGs you don't want to mess up a normal interaction that you're going to hear constantly because it's going to annoy you the entire time 
this is also one of those games that I personally just enjoy putting on my own music and just turning down the volume on my iPad. Nothing against this music in particular, but it does get a little bit repetitive. This game is a little bit more mechanically focused in that you're going to be focusing on performing the actions instead of uh, what's going on with the music and the art design. So what we just witnessed there, I would say, is the biggest failing of the game and something that bums me out the most. Because I think I think it most, it most shows off that this game is definitely an amateur product, even though sometimes it doesn't even really feel like that. Uh, the storytelling and characterization of the main characters and the enemies, I do not like that much. I am not a fan of the way that they portray the characters. I find them annoying, kind of childish. It seems like a 14 year old made them up. And uh, yeah, uh, that's also how I feel about a lot of the character designs for the main character and uh, all of your helpers. They, they're they cool, but you know, like it feels very just derivative and uh, just nothing really original there. I think a lot of this game's value comes from the actual uh, gameplay here and not what the characters are saying or doing. Well, we're actually very close to death right now. I'm hoping we don't die. My character is dead. Uh, love shock, multi shot. Let's see what items we have. We've got nothing at all. Great. Oh, heals and revives an ally. Great. I'm gonna hopefully utilize this to the best of my ability. Ooh, dang it. Well, it done goofed up. Well, I'm dead. This is actually a good point to, to show off the upgrades menu. So when you go into upgrades, you can level up your characters. And as you can see, I have one skill to attribute in each of these characters. So what I'm actually going to do is increase Love Shock, which is our revive ability. Uh, I'm going to uh, put one, one point into Shield of Courage. And I'm going to, I guess, just learn this one combo trigger. It's pretty good. There's also a shop where you can buy certain things. So you can buy health uh, restoring items and energy restoring items. We'll go into a little bit more what uh, energy restoring items do uh, a little bit later. But I'm just going to buy uh, some potato hot dogs because these are incredibly valuable. So now I'm going to go to the very first level. We are going to go uh, for veteran difficulty. And I want to show off a bit of what the story has to offer. Oh, okay. This might have been too. This might have been too hot for me. All right. So uh, as you can see, when you raise the difficulty level, the QTEs become more difficult. This is more of a do it because you enjoy the the combat of the game and, and just enjoy the overall gameplay mechanics. Uh, I actually think it's a really good example of them knowing what their game, why their game is good. And anybody who does the higher difficulty is just doing it for the love of the game and their increased skill at playing the game itself. That's one of the really positive things I can definitely say about Fearless Fantasy. It really does its combat well for what it is. I've never seen anything quite like it, and I think it really does what it does well, and it and the difficulty system would make anyone who really loves this combat, somebody who really loves this combat style and could just do it a bunch on their iPad or on their computer in their off time, I think you could waste a lot of hours just playing this. The core mechanic loop is entertaining enough on its own. The characterization is not great. I wish it was better, but it just really hampers the game. And whenever I hear it, I'm just like, oh, this this sucks. It does give you the option to skip, but you shouldn't have to skip. So when we look at this guy's, we have Canopy Shield. So Codependent, this character dies when left alone. Uh, so while this character is alive, allied characters receive 50% damage from ranged attacks. So we've seen this before. So a thing that we're going to do from a mechanic standpoint is think about, well, I mean, our bow woman Alice cannot actually uh, attack in any other way that's not ranged. So what I figure what would be a good thing to do is actually start using her moves to heal this character and use our main character, Leon, to just uh, 
take out this little guy right here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my items and heal my guy because in the next the next encounter is going to be a boss encounter. So he's dead. Uh, that was really quick. Usually you're not going to be able to defeat an enemy that quickly, but I do have increased weapons and bows and stuff like that from playing a little bit more into the game. So uh, we're actually coming up into the the Peepo Might. Uh, so the Peepo Might is a really interesting character to me. This character is a very interesting character because first off, it was the reason that I actually picked up this game in the first place. I saw this, I saw this character as the avatar for the game and I was like, what is this nonsense? Uh, this character looks like just crazy weird. And he actually applies a really interesting status effect, and I think one of the most interesting status effects that have ever been uh, done in an RPG, and that's, like, uh, I think it gives you, like, I think it's called blindness, where you can't see the timing on your QTEs, which can either make or break you, depending on how good you are at the game. This isn't just you attacking, this also affects your uh, dodging as well, so if an enemy is attacking you, you can't see when you're supposed to perform these actions. So I'm going to continue to attack this character, but my timing is all in my head. I'm getting perfect, perfect. I got an epic there, which is great. Uh, he doesn't really have that much health, but that actually makes him a very powerful enemy in the beginning, uh, is that little ability. But I figure I should show off at least one special move before we end off here. So I'm actually going to use a combo trigger, high risk, high reward, ranged attack, uh, epic, massive bow damage plus. So let's try this. So the question comes back again, should you play Fearless Fantasy? In my opinion, I have mixed feelings on the game. Uh, first off, the game came into, out in 2014, so it's not the newest thing, but I think if you're really into RPGs, uh, especially turn-based RPGs, and are looking for something new to play in the background, a game that has really good art, really good enemy design, but not so great character design, this is the game for you. It's $7.80, so I would say it was definitely worth the asking price. It was actually cheaper to get it on the iPad, which I feel is the superior version. If you're into RPGs and want something to play on your iPad, I highly recommend Fearless Fantasy. I definitely had some problems with the overall game. I thought that the story actually ruined a lot of the entertainment value I had for playing it. I apologize to any voice actors or writers, but the characters were voice acted very poorly and they were written very poorly. I feel like the game just deserved Deserved better and it, it just it was just disappointing because I feel that this game really shines in its mechanics and it really shines on the iPad it shines on both the iPad and the mouse but if you have to choose I would say choose the iPad so that's my opinions on should you play fearless fantasy if you guys like this video consider subscribing for more content like this and consider liking the video it actually helps me out a lot thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys next time